Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mindset Matters, the courage to continue. This podcast is meant to bring hope and inspiration to your day. You and I have been born into a unique time in history. The command to guard our heart and mind has never been more vital to our mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Let's guide each other on this journey. If you have a hero heart story from your corner of the world that you would like to share on this podcast, please send it to the email address, mindsetmatterspodcast, numeral one, at gmail.com. If you know of someone who would benefit from uplifting content, please share this podcast. Please visit our website, mindsetmatters.buzzsprout.com. Now please join me for an uplifting hero heart story. Let's embark on an epic adventure as we delve into the life of Ernest Shackleton, the fearless Antarctic explorer who defied the harshest elements of nature and the limits of human endurance. Shackleton's story is a masterclass in leadership, determination, and survival against all odds. Join me on a thrilling journey through the frozen, unforgiving landscapes of Antarctica, where Shackleton's indomitable spirit shines as a beacon of hope and resilience. Get ready to be transported to the heart of the heroic age of exploration of the Poles and discover the incredible legacy of Ernest Shackleton. Welcome to Mindset Matters, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the life of one such individual. This is episode two, The Courage to Lead When All Seems Lost, The Hero Heart of Ernest Shackleton. Settle in for a gripping tale of courage, resilience, and unwavering faith. Let me take you to the setting of our story, which occurs during the Polar Exploration Age, also known as the Heroic Age. The Heroic Age of Antarctic exploration was a remarkable era in the history of mankind's quest to conquer the frozen continent of Antarctica. This era unfolded between the late 19th century and the aftermath of the First World War. During the Heroic Age, Antarctica seized the imaginations of explorers worldwide, sparking a frenzy of scientific and geographical expeditions. Seventeen major Antarctic expeditions were launched, representing ten different nations. What unified these ambitious undertakings was the formidable challenge they faced, a lack of advanced transportation and communication technologies that modern explorers take for granted. In this age, each expedition was an epic test of human endurance, pushing the physical and mental limits of its intrepid crew members. The term heroic was aptly applied in retrospect, recognizing the countless adversities confronted by these pioneers, many of whom paid the ultimate price for their audacity. Indeed, a somber testament to the error's challenges is the fact that 19 expedition members lost their lives in pursuit of Antarctic exploration. These early explorers, armed with limited resources and boundless determination, etched their names in history through their relentless pursuit of knowledge and discovery in one of planet's most unforgiving environments. Their exploits continue to inspire awe and admiration, showcasing the remarkable human spirit's capacity to conquer the unknown, even in the face of daunting odds. Geographically, our story takes place in the Antarctic. The Antarctic, often described as Earth's final frontier, is a realm of awe-inspiring extremes and unparalleled natural grandeur. 
Located at the southernmost tip of our planet, this icy continent is a world unto itself, a place where nature's most magnificent and most challenging forces collide in a breathtaking display of beauty and harshness. Picture a land where the sun's rays paint the landscape in ethereal hues during the brief summer, while in the long, unforgiving winter, the sun disappears entirely, plunging the continent into a months-long night. Here, ice reigns supreme, covering nearly every inch of the landmass with its icy grip. The Antarctic ice sheet, an expanse so vast it's hard to comprehend, holds about 90% of the world's fresh water, and its weight shapes the very bedrock of the continent. Yet, despite the apparent desolation, the Antarctic teems with life, both above and below the surface. Towering icebergs sculpted by the inexorable forces of time and temperature majestically cruise through the frigid waters, home to agile penguins, mighty whales, and an array of seabirds. Beneath the ice, a thriving world of astonishing diversity thrives in the extreme cold, with bizarre creatures adapted to the harshest conditions, from translucent sea cucumbers to elusive ice fish. The Antarctic landscape is an otherworldly tableau of stark contrasts. Towering mountains rise from the frozen plains, their jagged peaks seemingly piercing the heavens. Pristine glaciers flow inexorably toward the sea, creating fantastical ice formations and crystalline caverns. And across the vast, wind-swept expanses, a resolute silence envelops you, broken only by the haunting calls of seals and the occasional howl of an Antarctic storm. This is a place where intrepid explorers like Ernest Shackleton wrote the pages of history, facing unimaginable hardships and challenges in their quest to conquer the last untamed frontier on Earth. Born in the picturesque village of Kilkea in County Kildare, Ireland, Ernest Shackleton embarked on a remarkable journey that would lead him to the ends of the earth. At the age of 10, his family, who hailed from an Anglo-Irish background, uprooted themselves and relocated to the suburbs of South London in Sydenham. Shackleton's destiny became intertwined with the icy allure of the polar regions when he joined Captain Robert Falcon Scott's legendary discovery expedition between 1901 and 1904. Although health issues forced him to return home prematurely, not before achieving the remarkable feat of reaching latitude 82 degrees south alongside Scott and Edward Adrian Wilson, setting a new southern record. Undeterred by setbacks, Shackleton's thirst for adventure led him to undertake the Nimrod expedition from 1907 to 1909. Here, he and his intrepid team pushed the boundaries of exploration by achieving the farthest south latitude at an astonishing 88 degrees south. A mere 97 geographical miles separated them from the coveted South Pole, marking the most substantial advancement toward the pole in the annals of exploration. But Shackleton's achievements didn't end there. Members of his team even scaled Mount Erebus, an active Antarctic volcano. His triumphant return earned him the prestigious honor of knighthood from King Edward VII, resulting in the moniker of Sir Ernest Shackleton. He then directed his focus towards an audacious dream the crossing of Antarctica from one sea to another, right through the pole. His ambition to cross the formidable expanse of Antarctica was more than just a daring adventure. It was a testament to the human thirst for discovery, the relentless pursuit of scientific knowledge, and the sheer audacity of defying nature's harshest challenges. Ernest Shackleton, the legendary polar explorer, was a man of remarkable physical presence and rugged charm. Standing at around 5 feet 10 inches tall, he possessed a sturdy, well-proportioned frame that exuded an aura of strength and resilience. Shackleton's weathered face bore the deep etchings of a life spent battling the harshest elements of the Antarctic and Arctic regions. 
His piercing blue eyes, set beneath a prominent brow, seemed to carry the weight of countless adventures. They were often described as intense and determined, reflecting his unwavering commitment to his exploratory endeavors. His hair, once a dark chestnut, had gradually turned silver at the temples over the years, a testament to the countless hardships he had faced during his expeditions. It was typically kept short, neatly combed to accommodate the practicalities of life in extreme cold. A close-cropped beard adorned his rugged jawline, adding to his overall air of stoic determination. Shackleton's posture was that of a man who had spent a lifetime navigating treacherous terrains. His shoulders were broad and square, a testament to his physical strength and resilience. His hands, calloused from years of frostbite-inducing cold, were a testament to his hands-on approach to exploration. He often wore the attire of a seasoned polar explorer, donning heavy, fur-lined jackets and durable leather boots, which bore the scars of countless miles walked across ice and snow. His preferred hat, a wide-brimmed fedora, was often adorned with the emblems of various expeditions, each a testament to his unrelenting pursuit of discovery. Shackleton's voice, deep and resonant, carried the confidence of a leader who had faced adversity head-on and emerged victorious more times than most could imagine. His eloquence in conveying his experiences and the significance of exploration made him an engaging storyteller capable of captivating audiences with tales of survival and endurance. In every aspect of his appearance, Shackleton embodied the indomitable spirit of an explorer who pushed the boundaries of human endurance in the name of discovery. At the turn of the 20th century, Antarctica remained one of the last uncharted frontiers on Earth. For explorers like Shackleton, this vast, icy wilderness represented the final blank spot on the map, beckoning them to fill it with the details of the stark beauty and forbidding landscapes. The allure of being the first to traverse the frozen continent was a powerful motivation. Shackleton believed in the transformative power of adversity and saw the expedition as a way to cultivate courage and endurance in himself and his men. Curiously, the ship commissioned for this journey would be aptly named the Endurance. Exploration was not just a personal endeavor, it was a matter of national pride. Shackleton's expedition was endorsed by the British government and enjoyed significant public and financial support. Crossing Antarctica would not only be a monumental achievement for Shackleton personally, but also a source of immense pride for his country, bolstering Britain's status as a global superpower. Securing funding for an ambitious expedition like this venture was no small feat, and it required resourcefulness, persuasive skills, and a combination of public and private support. Sir Ernest Shackleton employed several strategies to secure the necessary funding to build the endurance. Through a combination of personal sacrifices, persuasive communication, government support, and a network of sponsors and supporters, Shackleton successfully secured the funding needed to build the endurance and launch his historic imperial transantarctic expedition. His ability to leverage various sources of funding demonstrated his determination and resourcefulness in the pursuit of his Antarctic dream. Shackleton's quest for the ideal ship led him to a renowned shipyard in Norway, known for its expertise in crafting vessels tailored for polar exploration. The choice of shipyard was crucial, as the ship needed to be robust enough to withstand the crushing pressures of pack ice and agile enough to navigate the ice-choked waters of the Antarctic. The Endurance was designed as a three-masted barkentine, a sailing vessel that combined the power of square-rigged sails with the flexibility of fore and aft sails. The rigging design was optimal for maneuvering in the unpredictable winds of the Southern Ocean. The ship's construction prioritized strength and durability. Its wooden hull was heavily reinforced, particularly at the bow, where it would encounter the brunt of the ice. The builders meticulously selected the finest materials, crafting the ship's frame from dense oak and her hull from sturdy Norwegian pine. A notable feature of the Endurance was its double-planked hull. 
This innovative design featured two layers of wooden planks with a layer of felt and tar-soaked oakum between them. This not only added an extra layer of insulation against the frigid waters, but also provided added strength, crucial for combating the pressures exerted by encroaching ice. While primarily a sailing vessel, the Endurance was equipped with an auxiliary steam engine. This engine, a technological marvel of its time, provided additional power when needed, allowing the ship to maneuver in confined spaces or when adverse conditions made sailing impractical. Before setting sail for the Antarctic, the Endurance underwent rigorous sea trials to ensure its seaworthiness. These trials tested the ship's stability, speed, and ability to withstand harsh weather conditions, confirming that it was more than up to the task. With the construction complete, the Endurance emerged as a symbol of human ambition and perseverance. She was not just a vessel. She was the embodiment of Shackleton's dream, a dream that would soon face the ultimate test in the icy grip of the Antarctic. The crew of the Endurance, handpicked by Sir Ernest Shackleton, was a diverse and intrepid assembly of men who embarked on one of the most audacious polar expeditions in history. Each member brought their unique skills, backgrounds, and personalities to the expedition, forming a tightly knit team forged in the crucible of the Antarctic. At the helm of endurance was Sir Ernest Shackleton himself, a seasoned Antarctic explorer. He not only was the expedition's leader, but also its driving force. His charisma, unwavering determination, and remarkable leadership would inspire and guide the crew through the harrowing trials they were to face. His trusted second-in-command was Frank Wilde, an experienced polar hand. Wilde's calm and steadfast demeanor complemented Shackleton's leadership, earning him the respect of the crew as a reliable and capable officer. Tom Crean, an Irishman with a background in the Royal Navy, was no stranger to polar exploration. He had served alongside Shackleton on previous expeditions and was known for his courage and resourcefulness, qualities that would prove invaluable in the challenging times ahead. Frank Hurley, the expedition photographer and cinematographer, brought a creative and artistic flair to the crew. His stunning images and films would later capture the world's imagination, providing a visual record of their epic journey. The Endurance crew included scientists who conducted invaluable research in various fields, including geology, meteorology, and biology. These men were dedicated to advancing human knowledge, even in the harshest conditions. A group of experienced sailors and seamen manned the ship's rigging, navigating the treacherous waters of the Southern Ocean. They were responsible for maintaining the endurance and ensuring its safe passage through ice-infested waters. The crew also included ice masters, who possessed a deep understanding of ice conditions and how to navigate through them safely. Their expertise would prove critical when the endurance became trapped in a pack of ice. The crew hailed from various corners of the globe, representing a diverse range of nationalities and backgrounds. This diversity enriched the expedition, bringing different perspectives and skills to the table. In December 1914, Shackleton and his crew of 27 men set sail from South Georgia Island. Their ambitious goal was to make the first complete crossing of the Antarctic continent, starting from the Waddell Sea and heading toward the Ross Sea via the South Pole. Their voyage began with optimism, but in January 1915, their fortunes took a dramatic turn. The endurance became ensnared in the pack of ice of Weddell Sea, and no matter how hard they tried, they could not break free. The ship was trapped, and it soon became clear that they would have to endure a harsh Antarctic winter on board. For an entire year, the ship had battled the relentless grip of the ice, its hull groaning and creaking as the frozen vice tightened. The wooden vessel seemed to voice its protests through eerie howls echoing in the frigid air. Then, on the fateful day of October 27, 1915, a fresh surge of pressure coursed through the ice, lifting the stern of the ship and mercilessly tearing away both its rudder and keel. 
It was a moment of reckoning, the culmination of months of torment. Boys, she's going! The cry rang out through the frozen expanse, a stark acknowledgment of impending disaster. The time had come to abandon their once proud vessel. Ernest Shackleton and his stalwart crew, who had found themselves trapped in the icy clutches of Antarctica for a grueling ten months, had long prepared for this inevitable moment. With heavy hearts and a sense of impending loss, they retrieved their last remnants of personal belongings from the doomed vessel and began to establish their new camp on the unforgiving ice. As the icy jaws of the Antarctic's unforgiving grip threatened to swallow his beleaguered ship, the Endurance, Sir Ernest Shackleton faced a dire decision. With every passing moment, the vessel was succumbing to the relentless pressure of the pack ice, and its fate seemed sealed in the frigid depths. In a moment of leadership forged in the crucible of adversity, Shackleton issued a resolute command to his crew. Abandon ship! They were allowed to take with them only the most essential of personal possessions, a mere two pounds worth each. Yet amid this desperate scramble for survival, there was one remarkable exception. Among the cherished belongings, Shackleton permitted a seemingly incongruous item, a five-string Windsor zither banjo, the prized possession of the expedition's meteorologist, the spirited and youthful Leonard Hussey. Although Hussey's musical repertoire may have been modest, his tunes had become a lifeline to the crew during the interminable sunless Antarctic nights. Shackleton, acutely aware of the toll that isolation and anxiety could exact on the crew's morale, made a compassionate decision to ensure that Hussey's melodies would continue to resonate through the hardships that lay ahead. It's the tonic for our minds, remarked Shackleton, emphasizing the importance of music, and we shall crave it. With these words, Hussey's banjo, a formidable twelve-pound companion, joined the expedition's meager essentials. In the trying months that followed, he transformed into the group's musical guardian, nurturing their spirits through weekly concerts and heartening sing-alongs on the cold, frigid ice. In October 1915, the Endurance was abandoned, and the crew established a camp on the ice floe. They salvaged what supplies they could, including three lifeboats, and prepared for a long and uncertain journey. Shackleton's leadership during this period was nothing short of remarkable. He understood the critical importance of maintaining the crew's morale in such dire circumstances. He organized activities, kept a sense of routine, and ensured that everyone had a role to play. His optimism and unwavering determination were a source of inspiration for the crew. When the ice finally released its grip in April 1916, Shackleton made the audacious decision to embark on an open boat journey to reach the closest land called Elephant Island. Using the salvaged lifeboats, the crew endured treacherous conditions, including freezing temperatures, storms, and the constant threat of capsizing. After an astonishing ten-day journey, the crew reached Elephant Island, a desolate and uninhabited land. They had survived against all odds, but their ordeal was far from over. Elephant Island offered no hope of rescue, as it was far from the regular shipping routes. Recognizing the dire situation, Shackleton knew that they needed to seek help. Leaving most of his men behind on Elephant Island, Shackleton and five others embarked on a daring 800-mile voyage in one lifeboat to reach South Georgia Island, where there was a whaling station. Their journey was a grueling test of endurance and navigation. They battled storms and frigid waters, with the constant fear of starvation looming over them. In an extraordinary feat of navigation and determination, they reached the rugged shores of South Georgia Island. However, their journey was far from over. South Georgia Island was on the opposite side of the island from the whaling station. Shackleton and two of his men embarked on a grueling 36-hour trek across treacherous mountainous terrain to reach help. As they embarked on a perilous 36-hour march over the unnamed and foreboding mountains and glaciers of South Georgia, 
Shackleton's belief in an incorporeal companion became a profound conviction. In his own words, he recounted, quote, During that long and racking march, it seemed to me often that we were four, not three. End quote. Shackleton, his loyal companions, and an unexplained presence, an eerie sense of another's presence, perhaps a guardian angel, perhaps the projection of Shackleton's unwavering hope, walking steadfastly by their side through the treacherous white wilderness. This extraordinary admission by Shackleton had a ripple effect, resonating deeply with survivors of extreme hardship, who in the darkest hours of their own ordeals had sensed the inexplicable presence of another. Shackleton's revelation inspired others to come forward and share their similar experiences, forging a remarkable connection between those who had stared into the abyss of despair and glimpsed a flicker of the unknown. The enigmatic presence Shackleton described found its way into the realms of literature, echoing through the verses of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, lines 359 through 365 of this seminal 1922 modernist poem, bear the unmistakable influence of Shackleton's account. Eliot's words capture the essence of this phenomenon, personified in the reference to the third, an elusive and ethereal figure who walks alongside even when we count only two. In the frozen desolate expanses of the Antarctic and the pages of poetic masterpieces, Shackleton's belief in the unexplained presence and its profound impact on those who shared his trials continues to weave a haunting narrative that transcends the boundaries of the known world. It serves as a testament to the enduring mysteries of the human spirit and the power of belief in the face of the most daunting challenges. At long last, after a grueling odyssey of epic proportions, Shackleton and his steadfast companions arrived at the whaling station. There they rallied support for a daring rescue mission, setting the stage for an extraordinary chapter in their adventure. With sheer determination and unwavering resolve, Shackleton returned to the desolate shores of Elephant Island, where his stranded crew had endured unimaginable hardships for months on end. Against all odds, the story takes an astonishing twist. Every single member of the Endurance crew had survived the ordeal. All 27 brave souls who journeyed under Shackleton's command not only survived the treacherous Antarctic Odyssey, but also triumphed over history's relentless attempts to bury their ill-fated ship. This brave crew returned home to discover that World War I had begun. It is undeniable that Shackleton's exceptional leadership played a central role in ensuring the safe return of all 28 men from the harrowing endurance expedition. His self-assured demeanor served as a reassuring beacon to the men who literally ventured into the abyss at his side. Shackleton was not just a leader, he was a symbol of strength, maintaining a constant connection with his crew to safeguard their emotional and mental well-being. Commitment was the driving force of his life, evident in his unyielding dedication to his goals and his unwavering pursuit of his dreams. As he succinctly put it, quote, through endurance, we conquer, end quote, a testament to his resolute determination. In the face of adversity, he showcased remarkable control over his life and emotions. Difficulties were not insurmountable obstacles, but mere challenges to overcome. When confronted with the uncontrollable forces of nature, he persevered, concentrating on what could be controlled and devising plans to rescue his men. Shackleton's emotional control was equally remarkable. He understood that the fragile thread of hope his crew held was intertwined with his behavior and attitude. His keen awareness of his crew's morale was evident in his actions, even when he was not present. When selecting the crew members for the perilous journey to South Georgia, Shackleton made a calculated decision to exclude a bully, recognizing the ne negative impact this individual would have on the well-being of those others. Shackleton's ability to navigate these emotional intricacies orchestrated harmony among his crew. 
Shackleton's health was greatly affected by the ordeals of the endurance expedition. He continued to plan further polar expeditions, including the ambitious Quest expedition in 1921. Tragically, his health deteriorated and he passed away on January 5, 1922, from a heart attack while en route to Antarctica for his final expedition. He was laid to rest on South Georgia Island, the place that had played a pivotal role in his legendary rescue mission. Shackleton's ability to overcome adversity, retain the loyalty of his men, and his extraordinary and ultimately successful efforts to rescue his endurance crewmates still inspires people today. The Universal Appeal brings visitors to South Georgia who continue to place memorials, mementos, and tokens on Shackleton's grave. Ernest Shackleton's name is etched in history as a beacon of leadership, an exemplar of unyielding determination, and a guardian of his crew's well-being during the endurance expedition. Their incredible survival, amidst the most unforgiving of circumstances, stands as a living testament to the indomitable spirit of human exploration and resilience when confronted by nature's most relentless challenges. Fast forward 106 years to March 9, 2022, when a fearless team of intrepid scientists and adventurers made an exhilarating announcement that sent waves of excitement throughout the world. The endurance had been found. The search was arduous as the ship's exact location had remained a mystery for decades. However, Guided by historical records and the unwavering belief that the endurance could be found, they persevered. Their efforts paid off in the most astonishing way. Deep beneath the ice, the unmistakable silhouette of the endurance emerged from the darkness like a ghost from the past. The ship, remarkably preserved by the frigid waters, lay in its icy grave, a time capsule from a bygone era. The discovery sent shockwaves through the exploration and historical communities, reigniting the enduring fascination with Shackleton's ill-fated expedition. The resurrection of the endurance is more than just a historical curiosity. It is a testament to the enduring human spirit of exploration. In an age where technology has illuminated the darkest corners of our planet and beyond, this scientific discovery reminds us that there are still mysteries waiting to be unraveled beneath the Earth's icy shroud. Moreover, the Endurance's return to the world stage serves as a powerful symbol of human tenacity and our insatiable hunger for knowledge. It speaks to our willingness to face the harshest environments and most daunting challenges in pursuit of understanding and discovery. In an era of fast-paced change and instant gratification, the story of endurance reminds us of the timeless allure of exploration and the rewards it can yield. There are still frontiers to explore, mysteries to unravel, and stories from the past waiting to be brought back to life. As we gaze upon the preserved relic of Shackleton's ill-fated expedition, we are transported back in time, reminded of the brave souls who ventured into the unknown and the enduring legacy they left behind. The endurance, once lost to the icy depths, has now resurfaced as a symbol of hope, resilience, and the boundless potential of human discovery, inspiring generations to come to embrace the call of the unknown. If you would like to learn more about the endurance, the crew, and Shackleton's journey, I highly recommend the following books. The first one is the book South, Shackleton's Last Expedition, written by Sir Ernest Shackleton himself, and it's his account of the journey um, using his logs and his personal recount. It has original illustrations and photographs and is a nice book. The second one I recommend is Shackleton's Way, Leadership Lessons from the Great Antarctic Explorer. This is written by Margot Morell, and the viewpoint is one of looking at how he um, used some classic leadership um, lessons, but also incorporated the soft skills of knowing how to take care of the human spirit as well.
And then there's also a beautiful children's book called Who Was Ernest Shackleton by James Buckley, um, James Buckley Jr. And this is geared towards eight to 12 year olds. Thank you for listening to this Hero Heart story. Please take a moment to grab your coffee and join me for Coffee Corner. Welcome to Coffee Corner. Thank you for joining me. My coffee today is Green Mountain, and it's the flavor, very decadent fall flavor of brown sugar crumble. It's really nice, and I have, um, trying to be healthier, I guess, so I'm using almond creamer, um, and it's just very nice. So it's nice to spend this time uh, with you. And I just wanted to share in a moment of vulnerability <laughs> when I listened to the Corey Ten Boom episode um, during the Coffee Corner part, I said something about the beautiful foliage, foil foliage, and I can't believe I said that. Um, so of course we know it's foliage, um, or if you're fancy, foliage, but not foil. So anyway, I found that little mistake. <laughs> And also, I thought I sounded tired. Um, and I apologize. Sometimes my my voice will sound tired. Um, our sleep schedule is a little bit off sometimes. Um, my uh, daughter with a disability sometimes doesn't sleep. And so if she's up, I'm up. And <laughs> sometimes that results in a, in a tired day the next day. But anyway... Um, I would love to hear from you. I'd like to hear what you uh, thought of today's episode about Shackleton. It's just, it's really an amazing story. Um, and because they had a cinematographer in the crew, there's um, actually some video, original video you can find on YouTube and um, of course some documentaries. And as I was researching for the episode, um, I was kind of surprised that I found the part about how the ship was built to be really interesting. Um, and it, all that went into it um, to make it a ship that could traverse through those ice flow packs. Um, I just thought that was really cool to learn about. Um, and of course, I really found Shackleton's leadership style to be really intriguing. Having been a, a past principal, um, I could have learned a lot <laughs> from Shackleton, um, you know, and how he he kept routine and he, he kept, um, you know, everyone had a role, so they were valued members of the team. Um, he just had a really strong leadership style. But even more than that, he was very aware of the emotional side of people and how important that is to survival. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me was that he concentrated on what could be controlled. So I'm sure being an explorer, there's so much you come across that you can't control. <laughs> um, but he focused on what could be controlled and made his decisions from, from that viewpoint. Um, and I just thought that was kind of interesting when I reflected, uh, you know, that that would be helpful for me to focus on the things that I can control. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this um, episode. I would love to hear from you. You can share anything you would like. Please email me at Mindset Matters Podcast numeral one at gmail.com. Um, that's all lowercase Mindset Matters Podcast numeral one at gmail.com. In the subject line, if you would please write Coffee Corner, that would help me to keep my emails organized. Um, trying to stay organized because it really helps me think clearer uh, and stay more positive. I think the older I get, clutter seems to bother me. <laughs> um, so these little strategies help me to organize my day. Um, I'd also love for you to send a hero heart story from your corner of the world. It doesn't have to be long or polished, just something to encourage us all. Um, I'd like to share one now so you can get an idea of what it could sound like. 
This one is from Sarah. She writes, Hi there, I have enjoyed your hero heart story. My name is Sarah, and I'd like to share about a woman named Kathy Duke, who was who was our beloved co-director of Stone Soup Food Pantry. She passed away recently at the age of 73. Kathy worked around the clock to stock shelves, raise money, and create a welcoming place where people could ask for help with dignity. She was loving and caring, like an Irish grandmother, who brought that part of her personality into the world of caring for the underprivileged. And with her Irish gift of gab, she changed the pantry from a small bread-based pantry into offering all types of food and clothing and furniture. She was known in the community as a tireless advocate for her efforts to raise money and bring in donations. She also was known for quietly inspiring those around her to volunteer, help others, and improve their own lives. She didn't just meet physical needs. It was her words of encouragement. It was the pick yourself up and you can do better attitude messages she gave to others. If you can picture an Irish grandmother, that was Kathy. Everybody was hers. It didn't matter where you came from. She treated you like you were hers. She would help anybody who walked through the door. She'd stop. She'd listen and she'd care. She was involved with the food pantry for more than a decade. One time she shared with me that she was motivated to help others in part by her own experience with hunger as a young mother. She never ever judged or treated anyone differently. She called everyone hun and hugged them. Thank you for reading my hero heart story. I'm going to miss Kathy from Sarah. Sarah, this is so uplifting. Thank you so much for sharing this. I wish I could have known Kathy. Um, I feel like I did. There was one woman I knew that used to work at a pantry that um, had some similar qualities, um, just loving and caring. And I like that word, non-judgmental. Um, this was such an inspiring story and it just highlights how any one of us can make the world better just by what we do and say. We don't have to have a degree. We don't have to have special training. Um, it's just being a good person, um, and loving people and not judging them and helping them and being there for them. I liked what you wrote about. She listened. Um, thank you for being the brave first one to send a hero heart story. Thank you very much. I'd like to leave us with this gratitude quote brought to us today from Roy T. Bennett. Each day brings new opportunities, allowing you to constantly live with love. Be there for others. Bring a little light into someone's day. Be grateful and live each day to the fullest. Thank you. And we'll see you for the next episode. It's going to be a fun one about a hero heart animal. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email Mindset Matters Podcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast, the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.